Three and a half years, nearly to the day, after a gunman shot and killed 10 people at a grocery store, today families finally learned what will happen to the man responsible. A unanimous verdict will send Ahmad Elisa to prison for the rest of his life. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kim Christensen. I'm Tom Green. The jury reached the verdict at about 1.30 today, guilty on all 55 counts, rejecting the defense's argument that Elisa was insane when he opened fire at the Table Mesa King Supers. That was Monday, March 22nd, 2021. Jury verdict count number one as to Nevin Stanis. We, the jury, find the defendant, Ahmad Alyssa, guilty of count number one, murder in the first degree. The reading of the verdict lasted nearly 30 minutes. The final count, guilty of 10 counts of first degree murder, guilty of 39 counts of attempted murder or assault, and six counts of using a large capacity magazine. And now in the last 90 minutes, the families of the victims have had their chance to speak, sharing their pain and grief, a chance to confront the shooter and the court itself. The victim impact statements are continuing even at this time. We've heard from some families of several victims, including Nevin Stanisic, Kevin Mahoney, Trelona Bartkoviak, Ricky Olds, and Lynn Murray. Nevin was their first joy, first happiness, and their first sadness and heartbreak. No parent should have to grieve as I have watched my parents grieve over my brother. I wish the young man behind the gun had received more love in his life because then maybe none of this would have happened. My dad didn't want to go. He had so much more life in him. My entire family will never be the same. We mourn and continue to mourn. There is always emptiness that is unspoken. The murder of my niece, Ricky Olds, at just 25 years old, has left a deep and unbearable void in our family and the lives of all who knew her. He has given me and all of us a life sentence. I've been sentenced to a life without my mom and now my dad. He has given us a life sentence, robbing us of family. Why should he get any less? These statements are incredibly powerful and difficult to hear, but so important as well as we learn more from these families. And Officer Tally's family is speaking right now. We're going to have more from them coming up at 430. For now, we want to check in with Nine News crime and justice reporter Kelly Rinke. And Kelly, you spoke to the shooter's family. Yeah, Kim, this comes after two weeks of a trial and the jury only deliberating for six hours before they handed down that guilty verdict. The family heard the verdict and they left the courtroom before that sentencing proceeding and the victim impact statements began. There was no question that the shooter was mentally ill. He had schizophrenia and the defense described him hearing killing voices inside his head. But the jury determined after looking at all of the evidence that he was sane at the time of the shooting and he knew the difference between right and wrong. Two psychologists had interviewed him for many, many hours and had made that same conclusion. The defense didn't call up a single expert who disputed that. Instead, they called his parents and siblings to the stand. The family from Syria all lived together in one house. They saw, uh, we saw them coming outside of the courtroom right after that verdict was read. His parents and siblings testified his personality began to change after high school. They said he was withdrawn, paranoid, and spoke less uh, a few years before the shooting. I spoke to the shooter's older brother, who said the family had no idea that he would do something like this. You had no idea that he had no, weapons? In the house, we, are, we were living six brothers, mom and dad, grandma, and we would have our sisters come in, our grandkids. We're just a big family. You know, my wife, my sister-in-law, just a lot of people in, you know, in, in, in the family. Everybody buys online. These days, everyone shop online. Every day we have, you know, stuff on the door. We just don't know what's inside. We never thought that, you know, there, there's anything crazy like this. Although the father had testified that he did know the shooter had a gun before the shooting, but he didn't call police because he says his son had purchased it legally. During the course of this whole trial, uh, the prosecution did not offer a motive. That, Kim, still remains unclear. So difficult to think about why that King Supers, why that day, and why now? It's, uh, it's something we'll never know, and that's one of the things that all these families will struggle with. Thank you so much, Kelly. Yeah, the why in general remains a big mystery, and Chris <sighs> yeah. and I have been talking about that this afternoon, but 
I think another thing you and I have talked about at length today has been the idea of that uh, mass shooting victims often get put into a pile, and today is one of those days where you realize you pull them apart. They're not, they're not. They're 10 people who may not have even known each other, who are very different here, there, and everywhere, and their families were all impacted in, in different ways. 10 different stories. Yeah. yeah. And that's what you're hearing in the sentencing hearing today. We heard just not too long ago from Eric, Officer Eric Talley's sister, who got word while she was at the gravesite of her brother that their verdict was in in this case. They had a little bit of notice. They had about a half an hour to get over to the courthouse. And it's those kind of stories. She said she came to the courthouse today with still some grass on her skirt because she was at the gravesite of her brother. And those are the individual stories of, of lives impacted and everyone getting the word a little bit after this, a little, not too long after noon today that a verdict had been reached and, and, and the verdict would be read in court today at around 125, it was a little bit late. They all came to the courtroom sort of hoping that this would be the answer, but they all have different reasons, a variety of different reasons for why they're mad, why they're angry, why they're sad, why they're ready to forgive. And there's too much of a tendency, I believe, for us in the press to sort of lump everyone together as the victims. There's 10 stories here, 10 unique stories. And we are hearing all of that in these impact statements. You see the range of emotions. And I know we talked to Eric Mahoney yesterday when she talked about, I mean, she's had two children in this time, how their lives, they can't stop their lives from going on, but they miss that person every day. And that's the universal. They know they will never, ever be the same. Kim, you, you've talked to so many victims' families. I've talked to so many victims' families. It's just like life moves on, but there's still a part of them that's sort of stuck back in March of 2021 when they got the news. And you're hearing lots of stories this afternoon about how the news was broken to them through phone calls or watching on television and fearing for the worst. They all watch this story unfold like many of us watch this story unfold. And they got word that worst news they could ever get in their life. Family members frantically wondering what was going on or calling them. Nevin's dad walked around for hours trying to find him. Well, he, was, he wasn't even in the store. He was going to be a, a, yeah. a more difficult yeah. case for them to, to determine why he was there. The, the thing you think about, though, is we all go to the grocery store. Yeah. You know, it's one of those places where you randomly bump into people you know and walk by hundreds of people you don't know. And in Colorado, think about this. We've had a movie theater. Yep. We've had a grocery store. We've had schools. We've had churches. All of those places where we're supposed to feel safe. Yeah. And it's, in this instance... We got a powerful reminder that these things can happen and sometimes they happen at random and sometimes they catch the most marvelous of people. And the stories we heard, that testimony was really powerful for the people that were there that survived. They too have suffered immensely for the rest of their lives and, I, and the jury too. Yeah, Watching an extremely that difficult that. trial for, for everyone uh, to go through. Obviously the families have, had already maybe been inert in some way to this but not not to seeing it also tangibly laid out, so clinically put in front of them, and, and for people like the jurors, and, and for people who work in the media as well, to sit in that trial every day and mm -hmm. see very difficult stuff, hear very difficult things. It's, I think it's very hard to process, extremely hard for those families, even with three and a half years lead on it. It's, it, it's been very difficult, and you know, while today may bring some finality, it, it's not a salve in any way. It's, it, there, are, there are no, no ways to, to get better from something like this. Life goes on for us, but these are people whose lives are stuck in that moment back in 2021. It'll stay that way. We're going to talk much more about this, uh, what happened today, uh, what is still happening in that Boulder County courtroom uh, throughout the hour here on 4 o'clock at 9 News. We do want to take a break. Take a look outside. Look at those beautiful mountains, some great sunshine, some beautiful September weather. Let's get over and talk to Corey Repenhagen real quick about uh, what has happened today and what is still to come. Corey? Mm -hmm. Lots of clear skies today. The sunshine was strong. The mild temperatures in the 80s today. Got the still 80 degrees here at the Nine News Studios. 80 degrees in uh, Denver International Airport. But you do see the clouds starting to appear here in the area. Those will stick around through the evening hours, but the temperatures will stay mild. We'll stay in the 70s till nearly 10 o'clock tonight. And here's the weather impact headlines that we are tracking. We will have an overnight cold front move through. It's a weak one. Not a 
lot of impacts. No precipitation, no really cold temperatures, but where you'll notice it, it'll keep our temperatures, our high temperatures down tomorrow. But we are tracking some record fall heat potentially on the way here especially Thursday, but Wednesday and Thursday will be unusually warm with near record high temperatures and the peak fall colors are upon us and it looks like we will have a spectacular seven day period for the viewing of those gold leaves up in the high country. I'll have more information on that coming straight ahead in the forecast. Our coverage continues this afternoon after the verdict read today, the King Super shooting. But of course, we will never forget the 10 lives that were lost that day. We do want to take a moment to honor and remember each of them.